In our first lecture, I described how Joe fell and how Becky fell into sin. They're both believers, love the Lord, but they both fell in rather dramatic fashions. It made me ask the question, why do people fall? Why did I fall? Why do others fall? I've experienced that with uh, many other individuals working through their failure with them. But the question always comes up, why? And I've had, come to realize that every one of us, I don't care who we are, how mature we are in the faith, how long we've walked with the Lord, we're capable of falling. Erwin Lutzer said, you and I are capable of indescribable evil. The potential for every sin lies within us. I remember being shocked as a young pastor, young missionary, when I heard about Christian leaders falling. I was a missionary in Brazil with my wife, 26 years old, and the man that recruited me for missionary service had fallen. We got notice of that, and I sat there and I was stunned. How could this happen? How could he possibly fall? What was my responsibility now? How could I help? What we should do with the man? Should we punish him? Should we reject him? Should we reach out to him? Many, many questions flooded my mind with him after we received that shocking communication. I was overwhelmed with a myriad of, of emotions. And since that time, I've had to face that uh, many other times, totally unprepared to know what to do. But what I have tried to do is to step back and ask that question, why do we do it? When we know better, and many times we even know the consequences of our actions, and yet we do it anyway. Some of explanations. We still have a sin nature. We need to understand that. And that sin nature is capable of every sin imaginable. Even though we become a new creature in Christ, we're born again, we have the Holy Spirit within us, yet the Holy Spirit lives and indwells this flesh of ours that is sinful, that has fallen, and that gravitates towards evil. And if we don't consistently walk in the Holy Spirit and trust him, we are capable of falling. Even though we've had that radical change, we carry baggage from the past into our new life, issues that were never resolved, and we have that sin nature just waiting to break out and manifest itself in a variety of ways. The other problem is the world system. We live in a broken, fallen world, and the world is constantly trying to squeeze us into its mold and its values. And many times we get caught up in that trap and our flesh gravitates to that. The world has its allure and away we go. The third reason I think we do it is the enemy of our souls, Satan. I am not the kind of person that sees a demon everywhere behind every bush, not, not at all. But I also realize we have an adversary, Satan, who goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, and he loves a shining target. If he can bring down a leader, he can affect many other people. So it makes sense that he would go after them. And uh, the Bible says that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers and wickedness in high places. And they target, I believe they target, especially Christian leaders. They target all believers, trying to get them to trip and to fall. So you have these three things constantly at working. Our sin nature, which is pulling us to gratify and satisfy the flesh. You have the world system with all of its glitter trying to suck us in and squeeze us into its mold. And then you have Satan energizing all of that and attacking us at our vulnerable sp spots. So in a sense, it's not surprising that people fall. 
And not surprising at all, this unholy trinity uh, at work. And even the Apostle Paul, here was a man after God's own heart like David. A man that walked with God, served God, wrote the epistles, and uh, preached magnificent sermons. And yet Paul says, I don't understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it's no longer I myself who do it, but it's sin living in me. That's that old nature. I know that nothing good lives in me, that is in my flesh. That is in my sinful nature, for I have the desire to do what's good, but I can't carry it out. For what I do is not the good I want to do, no, the evil I do not want to do, I keep on doing. Now, if I do not, now if I do what I do not want to do, it's no longer I who do it, but it's sin living in me. He was a believer. He had walked with God. He knew the truth. Scripture. He wrote it. It was inspired by, by the Holy Spirit. But he found failure in himself, the very things that we, we uh, said. And I think it's important that as Christians, we're very, very honest with ourselves. And we're honest in our churches. There are many defeated, struggling Christians, struggling with the flesh, or being attacked by the enemy, or getting squeezed by the world, or maybe all three. And they show up on Sunday morning, and everybody looks good and smells good and everybody's happy and you say, how are you? I'm fine and everybody's fine. But there is so much defeat and so many struggles going on and so much sin. And then once in a while, it becomes public. And especially if it's a leader, then nobody knows what to do or how, how to handle that. Even a small contribution can make a big difference. Jesus fed 5,000 people because of a little boy's five loaves. Regardless of the amount, your contribution is very important and greatly appreciated. Visit us at tvsseminary.com.